All right. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, it took me a minute to get in. Um, for some reason, GoToWebinar is not automatically logging me in anymore. So I had to kind of go through it again. So um, hopefully nobody left in the meantime. I'll wait just a minute to see who we can't get to join. As some of you are coming in, welcome to the Hurley Investments Trade Findings and Adjustments for Thursday morning, October 22nd. Some of you will notice that I have up here the exact same thing I had up from last time. Just to kind of go over a couple things and really to ask ourselves if much has changed. So here we are in another week. Let me go back to the S&P chart here. So the SPX chart from last week on Thursday around this guy, if you can see that on your screen. Um, <clears throat> have we gotten a direction since last week? What do you guys think? anything happened over the last week that would give us more of a sense of, of direction on our market? Any thoughts? William says, not really. Thanks, William. I'm going to have to agree with you. There's really nothing that's changed. And of course, neither is our news. Uh, headline news really changed. Uh, more what is the word more of the same uh, hope of stimulus coming through and no real news there. Pelosi said this morning, things are progressing, of course. They're not really um, coming together. Uh, I don't know why she would come out and say that they're progressing if it's really going to happen. Uh, latest headline, let's see, six minutes ago, Pelosi cautions that Congress may be far from passing stimulus despite some progress. Okay. Great. That gives us all a bunch of confidence that we need to go ahead and place all of our bullish trades because we believe Nancy Pelosi is maybe, probably, maybe not, kind of Probably not, but maybe going to come to an agreement with uh, with the Trump administration on a stimulus package. So I would say our first one here, nothing's really changed. So I bet you can guess a little bit about what may have changed or not changed on my thoughts for you 
on placing a new trade today. Um, again, if we get a stimulus tomorrow or later today after the market closes or what have you, then maybe a bullish trade might be a good idea again. But then we're looking at, of course, a um, election on the third, which we get closer and closer to. We're just a couple weeks away now, less than two weeks away. That uh, I would say any bullish trades would really be uh, after a stimulus package is agreed and uh, probably finished or closed out of for a profit, hopefully, by the time we get closer to November 3rd. Um, if not, really only you'd have a week. Because if you put it on today or tomorrow, that gives you one full week. And November 3rd is the Tuesday, the following week. So really you're looking at towards the 30th of October to be out of whatever you're in or really kind of close to Monday the second. So um, so really nothing has changed. Again, just to go over a couple of thoughts, I talked about Apple, Under Armour, JP Morgan. I mentioned that if JP Morgan got above the 200 day, I would like it much more. It's really close now. So if you do have that on, yeah, it is barely breaking it on the positive side today, um, which is good, but so many external factors that could influence influence it back the other way or what have you that I, unless you already have that on, I would still be probably waiting to see about a stimulus and really for JP Morgan where you're going out further out in time. Uh, remember this is a bull call calendar spread leap, I would say, because it's out for a couple of years with a shorter term short call above uh, the strike place price of a long call. Uh, you really might be better off just waiting for after um, we know who's going to be the next president. Um, I don't think a Democratic president in general will be good for positive for banks, but um, I certainly don't think that uh, Joe Biden will be. Um, politics aside, whether you like him or not, that's just how the market will perceive it. Uh, because of uh, higher regulation and with the uh, doldrums of the fact that we have low interest rates with no increase um, in sight. So that is what is going to be perceived. So if you haven't gotten on this, uh, you can go back to Kevin's webinar on the 13th of evening, Tuesday, uh, and check that out at myhurlinginvestment.com to check um, that one out. Uh, but at this point, I would be probably waiting until after an election there. So I'm going to redo this. Under Armour has looked awesome this week. We've kind of been chasing up on our shares. We've been chasing up um, the stock on, on uh, protection uh, because we're really in uncharted territory. Nothing is in the way of Under Armour until you really get up to 17, 1750. So that's good, but um, again, so much uncertainty in the short term 
that uh, unless you have shares and you're looking to to find a good place to protect, I would say $14 today would be a good place. And I'd probably go out to November 27th in a strike. As far as uh, anything else, I would wait on, on looking at some leaps. If that's what you're looking at, I would, I would probably just wait again till after the election. And that one, I really don't know, could go either way after an election. Probably uh, everything will go down if Biden is elected as the fear of higher taxes and higher corporate tax rate is going to, for the market, going to be perceived negatively. And see good time to protect shares apple we talked to this quite a bit where is apple down today really has not taken off after the initial pop from their phone iPhone 12 release, and I'm glad that we were able to get profits on puts in, in and around this time, let it go up on that, that uh, iPhone 12 release, and got protection back on, thankfully, as it's come back down. So we've managed that quite well, I would say, for those of you uh, with portfolio management from us and what a great winner that has been and even better that we get to um, hedge the downward movement on Apple right now. So um, I guess as far as a trade though, this one is, is again, I, I would think higher chance of trust, antitrust regulation and whatnot if a Biden again is elected, which is gonna perceive, be perceived negatively in addition to any corporate tax increase. So I'm uh, obviously I'm gonna say to wait till after the election on that as well. Um, and then all of these, you know, we can see if we get a Christmas rally after uh, an election, um, whether it goes either way, but that is a tough one because we don't know exactly how long it's going to take to count those ballots that have been mailed in. Uh, we don't know if there's going to be some legal problems with um, ballot fraud, well, even if there's a little bit or or not very much there might be some um, accusation of foul play and that could go either way as far as if it looks like trump's getting elected that maybe maybe biden is gonna um <laughs> throw something out there that you know there was some uh election meddling uh, of course they did that to trump for four years and tried to get him out of office, so why wouldn't they try and do it again if he was elected? And of course, um, Trump has has continued to to talk about uh, ballot for, uh, election voter fraud and ballots being thrown away with his name on it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That uh, if Biden looks like he's it's close and he's getting elected, then you know, there, there can be recounts. We've seen that back in the, the Bush Gore. And it certainly has a higher likelihood of happening and this time around, whether it, where it could stretch out um, and, and cause problems for a few weeks after the election day uh, third. So that's gonna be an interesting period uh, for the markets. So 
and you know, I'm just going to erase Apple because I think that one's pretty easy. If you feel like you haven't gotten anything from Apple, uh, you're going to want to wait till after an election where you can buy the dip or have a more certain understanding that it will continue to go up based on which person gets elected. So I'm going to put right now, kind of want to talk a little bit about a Facebook and board. So Facebook popped yesterday. Can anyone tell me why on earth Facebook went from 267 on Tuesday all the way up to 278? Over $10, 279 ish. Where did it close? 278 and a 73. What happened that made Facebook pop that huge gap up 11, $12? Can anyone tell me what's going on? Any thoughts? William says, likelihood of Biden getting elected. Um, Maybe William, but there's no, there was no, um, I, I guess the reaction there wouldn't make any sense as far as, you know, it could be the same issue for Facebook as it is for Apple, where they're more, they might be subject to antitrust issues if Biden's elected. Um, I mean, these big tech companies kind of are getting it negative um, sentiment from both sides of the political aisle. So uh, aside from that, there was no like news yesterday or Mon excuse me, Wednesday or Tuesday, excuse me, that would give us a good idea of a news headline that would have pushed it up like as far as if Biden is more likely to get elected because actually the um, the national poll is has uh, narrowed slightly um, and the state polls have been very close as well so William again, okay. Uh, William says, um, stimulus hopes. Again, that, that might explain a bit of why things have gone up in the morning. You notice a lot of these market days this week, uh, S&P days starts up and then kind of comes back towards the end of the day up on big hopes of of a stimulus and going through comes back down today it's kind of just flat so i would say if if of course if we do get a stimulus it would go up like everything else but it doesn't seem to be that that is the case of why Facebook had that huge leap up. So any other guesses? And uh, I don't blame anyone for really being confused on this because it's been confusing for myself. Um, 
but basically what we saw was snap earnings were great and that pushed up all of the social media stocks up twitter was up so a five percent move for facebook everything else was eight ten percent i think snap was up like ten percent i'll say pushed up all social media stocks so snap did amazing why is it, con it so it kind of makes sense that that would push the rest of the social media stocks up because they'll you'd, you'd think that that means they're all going to do fairly well with ad revenue um but uh, part of the problem with facebook is snaps at least um what they thought of as part of why they did so well on their ad revenue was because of the um ad boycotts from companies on Facebook, which um, then the idea was that they, that money then went to ads for Snap, ads on Snap rather. Um, just look at Snap. Yeah, so you see this ridiculous jump and they're still not at the price they were when they IPO'd, which is kind of funny. So um, I'll just say it's not necessarily true positive for Facebook because of it may have meant that ads revenue that Facebook would have otherwise had, Snap got. Okay, so why am I talking about this? Because I got excited yesterday and I thought, well, we ought to look at Facebook. But again, oh man, we've booked such a great profit on leaps on Facebook over here on September 3rd, right before it fell all the way down. So my interest is looking at, at where you could get back in Facebook on a leap call type trade. And again, uh, I think with this current scenario, it's a question of, do you want to put on a, a trade because you want to make it happen? Or I guess, let me, let me think of a better way to say this. Do you want to put on a trade because that is what the reality of our situation is? telling us is a good idea or do you want is it based on what you hope I'm sure there's a better way to <laughs> more concise way to say that but let me put this So as we're looking at opportunities, am I doing this? Let me say I wanted to put on a trade because it 
it's a good idea. With current reality or am I trying Let's see, am I trying to am I hoping for something I want to happen? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. So again, for Facebook, I would say although it does look like it's bouncing, or at least in a bullish trend from the bottom, down here at 250. They could have an incredible earnings, just like some of the other social medias one uh, stocks are. Um, or ad revenue and user engagement. Everybody's online arguing about politics. Um, but I could also see the flip side of that coin, which is businesses are having to get through a tough period now. And uh, some businesses, uh, restaurants, et cetera, are not gonna be chipping in for ad revenue when they're trying to cut costs, save money and keep as many of the jobs as they can. Um, as far as jobs, so much unemployment that I don't know, as far as the the whole umbrella, I guess you'd say the, the whole economic outlook. Um, could take much longer than we expect to to come back. I, I should say. So for those reasons, I'm I, I can see um, I could see Facebook also not doing well on their earnings. I guess that sounds kind of stupid. Of course, every stock could have great earnings or bad earnings, but I'm just kind of going over the reasons why it might be one or the other. So let me see. Think of a good way to say this. Um, Okay, so here's what I would say. So um, small because a lot of the small businesses uh, 
paying for ads could be bad. It's the smaller businesses that are really taking a bigger hit. Restrictions on election advertising could hurt. Let's see. I mentioned unemployment, so I'll say COVID. Keeping people from their jobs. Guys, are there any other thoughts? I, I think if you're looking at a Facebook, you would, should probably wait till after earnings because there is, like I said, too much uncertainty there. Um, I'll admit that I got excited yesterday seeing it pop like that. But uh, I don't think we're going to miss out on any opportunity, or at least not enough to warrant taking more risk now that we couldn't get after an earnings to follow a, a earnings, a positive earnings uh, run up or buying the dip if it, again, if it falls. So just kind of wanted to talk and uh, think out loud and go over that one um, as I hadn't really thought completely through it, but wanted to do that with you. So I hope, hope that kind of helps on Facebook. Let's talk about Ford real quick and wrap that up. So Ford. Back up to eight dollars. Ford's another one breaking the trend. Car sales for some reason are kicking up. I also read that the most stolen car through this year has been the Ford F-150, which is kind of hilarious, but um, makes sense since it's also the highest selling vehicle i think still in north america but ford all the way back to eight dollars and for portfolio management we decided to uh, it was a few couple weeks in here where we wanted to protect shares of ford at a higher price here before the election before earnings and really didn't get to a good place in a 50 cent increment where we have our um, option strike prices that really justified it. Um, came down a bit here a week and a half ago. Let me get a pen here. Close to 750 we thought about it well, let's get maybe some 750s on but it bounced so much on that day didn't make a whole lot of sense then and we just kind of let it do its thing looked again around this pivot point at 780 yesterday and the day before and it really didn't make sense because it's smack dab in the middle of a 750 and eight so we thought hey we really would it would be nice to see it through this time period, get up to $8, where then we can protect it at the money and not pay too much or have too little protection one way or the other if we were to get a, a 750 or eight before uh, 
seven fifty or eight dollar put before it had actually gotten to that point. So you can see. up to eight to protect, which is what I did this morning. So if you have shares of Ford, Great day, and let me update it, see where, if it's done anything else. Ooh, went up one cent. Great day to get $8 strike puts to protect shares. out to, you could do November month or all the way out to November 27th. I chose to go further out in time for like four or five more cents, I think four cents. Seemed like for an extra week made sense. Um, gets us through earnings, gets us through an election, and uh, Ford, I want you to go all the way up to ten, eleven dollars. That's just my request. So hopefully they'll do okay on their earnings. We'll see. And um, just wanted to throw that out there to to let those of you know with. Portfolio management, that's what we're doing. $8 protection, protective puts to get those taken care of. And I'm glad we were able to wait for a good portion of time to see those come up and protect at a higher price. Um, and uh, happy that we were able to do that this morning. So those are looking good. And guys, I think that's it for me for today. I hope that was educating, enlightening, helpful at least. And uh, are there any other questions or thoughts before I wrap it up now? Again, um, as you're looking at opportunities, uh, I hope most of you who already have trades that you're dealing with um, I hope that you're being protective. A good point to be protective, certainly for shares, obviously, and that you're giving yourself plenty of cash on the hand and time for any leap to, uh, leap style um, strategies on calls. You've given yourself plenty of time to dollar cost average. If you're wanting to try and jump the gun on a Facebook to see if it has great earnings, just know that uh, if it goes the wrong way that you're looking at could be as much as a year or more before it comes back and you're having to deal with it at that point to dollar cost average and have that be a drag on your portfolio until it comes back. And just wanted to throw that little warning out there. And remember, I really like this. Uh, am I wanting to put on a trade because it's a good idea with our current reality, 
or am I hoping for something I want to happen? Don't force the trade. You don't need to. There's going to be plenty of opportunity. I'm sure you've already got something on. There's going to be plenty of opportunity with what you already have. And I would hope that you're leaving room to protect shares and dollar cost average leaps that you're going to be running through this period with. Uh, if you have a bunch of stuff that's already re looking really good and profitable, take profit. Take a profit if you have to leave something on for what if it goes up, by all means, but at least, at the very least, take a profit. You have my blessing and permission. Not that you're looking for my permission. All right, guys, I think that's it. No questions or thoughts have come in, so I'll go ahead and wrap up. And uh, thank you again for joining me this morning. Always, I appreciate it. Um, have a good Friday and a good weekend, and I'll look to join uh, join you to listen to Kevin on Monday for our market commentary. Thanks. Have a good day.